Hi guys, Yasa Sikano Sisatas for another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're getting dinner on the table in 60 minutes. So in, in under an hour, we're going to have a complete meal on the table. We're, we're making Greek style lemony chicken and potatoes all in one pan. We're going to serve it with a delicious green bean salad that's going to be loaded with flavor. It's going to have your vegetables in there and it's just going to be so good. And of course, we're making some tzatziki on the side. But let's get started. So I like my lemony chicken and potatoes very lemony. You make it as lemony as you want, but you can put up to a third of a cup of lemon juice. Quarter of a cup is a good amount of lemon juice, so you can start there. And then next time, if you want more, you can just add a little more. So I'll just get the seeds out afterwards. These are juicy lemons. So I'll just put the juice of both of these lemons in here. It's a lot of lemon juice, but again, we like it lemony. I'm also going to add some olive oil to this. You could do a quarter or a third of a cup of olive oil. And we need some grated garlic. Three, grated, three garlic cloves would be perfect, but I started, like I said, I buy a big bag of peeled garlic, and then I just, I just pulse it in the food processor until it's grated, and I keep it in a freezer bag, and I just add it to whatever I need. Makes life really easy, and garlic never goes to waste. So I'll put about a teaspoon of grated garlic in here. And I'm going to add a quarter of a cup. You could do a quarter to a third of a cup of water because it is going to need some moisture. It's going to cook in the oven uncovered. I have six potatoes. I'm using Idaho potatoes. Use your favorite baking potatoes. Leave the peel on. Peel them however you want. I peeled them. And I'm just going to cut them into wedges. Cut them all roughly the same size so that way they cook evenly. So I have a big baking pan here. You could use a sheet pan. This is basically the same size as a traditional sheet pan, only it's stainless steel and it's a little bit deeper. So I like to use it. I'll put a link uh, on the blog post where you can get one similar to this. So I'll put the potatoes in here. Now you can use whatever cut of chicken you want. In my freezer today, I had boneless, uh, skinless chicken thigh meat. So that is what I'm going to be using. I'm going to pour the marinade on top. And I'm going to do two teaspoons of salt, about half a teaspoon of cracked black pepper, some crushed red pepper flakes for heat if you like it, a heaping teaspoon of ground cumin for that earthy goodness and warmth, and lots of oregano. It's going to make sure everything is coated in the marinade. I love using uh, chicken thigh meat because you can't really overcook uh, it. Even if you cook it longer than uh, 165 degrees Fahrenheit, like the internal temperature, it still stays juicy, whereas if you were using chicken breast, You'd have to be careful, and if you were doing that, just cook the potatoes first halfway and then put the chicken breast in at the end in the same pan. Otherwise, if you were to cook, this, this is going to cook for almost an hour in the oven, and if you do that with chicken breast, it's going to be really dry and, and tough, and you don't want that. You want everything to be nice and flavorful and juicy. My oven is preheated to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. This is going to bake in there uncovered on, on the center rack for about 45 minutes or until the potatoes are fork tender and the chicken will be fully cooked. You can raise the temperature to 450 during the last 15 minutes so you can get a nice, uh, really nice color to it. While that's baking, we're going to get started on our green bean salad. All right, so make sure that you trim the ends of your green beans if they're not already trimmed. Bring a pot of water to a boil and then put them in and boil them for seven minutes. And also add about a teaspoon of salt to the water so that way they have some flavor. You want to have a big bowl of ice water ready because as soon as the green beans are ready, you want to put them in here to shock them so that way they stay nice and bright green and they don't continue to cook. All right, so then go ahead and drain the beans once uh, you shock them for, you leave them in there for about two minutes or so. Then, or even less, actually. You don't need them to be freezing cold. You're just trying to stop the cooking process and um, keep them nice and bright green. This is what they look like. Okay, pat them dry so that we can get rid of all that excess water. And now it's time to make the dressing. All right, so the dressing is really easy to make. You just need one or two garlic cloves. And I already have some grated garlic here. I'm just putting a quarter teaspoon of grated garlic. That should be good enough. We're going to need some balsamic vinegar, about three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, about a tablespoon of honey, a quarter cup of really good quality extra virgin cold pressed olive oil. That might be a little more than a quarter cup. And then I'll put a little bit of salt and some cracked black pepper and just give everything a whisk. And that's it. The dressing is done. Let's get all the rest of the ingredients. 
So I have some uh, walnuts here that I just popped in a 350 degree oven and I toasted them just until they were nice and fragrant for about five minutes. I'm just going to go ahead and roughly chop these. These are going to add nice crunch and texture to the salad. You always need something a little bit crunchy, something salty, something acidic. You get all of the flavors in, in a salad and it just it becomes really filling and comforting and delicious. Now you can use pecans instead, almonds, whatever you like. Put the nuts in there. And then I'm using some dried figs. These are going to add a nice little chewy bite and some sweetness. Four or five figs are good enough, but put as many as you want. If you don't have figs or if you don't particularly like them, you can put some dried cranberries in here, dried cherries. You could even put, uh, if you, you can even finally chop some dates and put them in there. And I'm just going to do little strips of these. I love dried figs. I love dried figs, fresh figs. Just give me figs in any form. <laughs> in the salad they go. Then I have some onion here left over. Uh, the recipe usually calls for a red onion, but I don't have any right now. I do have half of this white onion. I'm just going to use half of it, half of the half, so like a quarter. And I'm going to finely chop this. And then I have some grape tomatoes and I'm just going to cut into thirds because they're pretty big. If you have cherry tomatoes, just cut them in half. In the bowl they go. Next, I have some Kalamata olives, and these do have the pit in them, so I'm going to have to cut around to get the pit out. And I'm just going to cut these into little slivers. Now, if you have pitted Kalamata olives, just cut them in half and throw them in, or if you like them bite-sized. It's your salad. Make it however you like it. And the olives go in the big bowl. And then the last veggie that's going in here are some baby bell peppers that I'm just going to thinly slice. Now, it might seem like a lot of salad ingredients and you don't have to put all of them in here. These are just things that I usually have in my fridge or on hand. So they're going in here, but put your favorite things and keep it as simple as you want. Basically, the green beans with that dressing and the nuts and the feta cheese that's going to go in there in the end is delicious. But if you put everything in here, you'll have so many layers of flavor. Bell peppers add lots of freshness, so we're going to thinly slice them. Now I'm just going to quickly whisk up this dressing one more time to emulsify it. And I'm going to pour it over top and just toss everything together. And the final ingredient is some really good quality feta cheese. I buy it in the chunk form and then I just crumble it on top just like this for some creamy goodness. And there you have it. The salad is ready. So there's 20 minutes left on the clock for the chicken. We have our salad done. The chicken is almost done. Last thing I'm making is some tzatziki sauce because we need some creamy goodness. Chicken with tzatziki is like a match made in heaven and it is so easy to make. All right, so for the tzatziki, it's very simple. You need an English cucumber and go ahead and peel the skin off. If you like to leave the skin on, that's fine. Leave it on. Now, English cucumbers are best for this because they hardly have any seeds in them. And if they do, they're very small seeds. So you don't have to fish seeds out. <laughs> Get an English cucumber if you can. And then using a box grater, just go ahead and grate it. So cucumber has tons of water in it and you want to get that water out so that way your tzatziki is not watery. Sprinkle, sprinkle some salt over the grated cucumber and then put it in a little strainer and let it sit for about 10 minutes. You're going to see how much water it releases. So while that's happening, we're going to need some Greek yogurt in a bowl. And my mom does this, so I do it too. We need, we're going to add some sour cream to it for richness. And then the garlic. So some grated garlic. One to two garlic cloves are enough. I have grated garlic here, as we already know. So I will add about half a teaspoon. That should be good. You could put a little less if you don't like yours too garlicky. We're going to season with a little bit of salt. If you want to finally chop some fresh mint in here, that would be really nice and refreshing. Fresh mint in tzatziki or even dill is really nice. Some freshly cracked black pepper. And then just mix this all together. So I'm just going to press the cucumber so that way we can get as much of this water out as possible. Now this is a great dip to have a double batch of in the refrigerator because you can use it as a sauce in uh, sandwiches. You can use it as a dip. 
It's just great in everything and it stays fresh in the refrigerator for almost a whole week. If you want to keep it from gathering lots of liquid in the refrigerator, if you're keeping it for the week, keep a paper towel on top, a clean paper towel on top and it'll absorb the liquid. And each time you go to use it, take that paper towel out, discard it. And when you put it back in, put another one in there. It's going to keep the tzatziki nice and creamy. So the cucumber looks fine to me. You can let it drain a little bit longer and then just mix it all in. Give it a taste. Best part of cooking. Mm. Perfect. Once the chicken comes out, dinner will be served. So the entire meal is ready and it is time to take a bite. Once the chicken comes out of the oven, you're going to want to let it rest for a little bit. Mine did take up to 50, 50 minutes. You could even take it up to an hour if you want the potatoes to get a little bit more melted and soft and get a little more caramelization on them. However, there, there is going to be some sauce in there. The sauce is probably the best part. If you want to add um, some Mediterranean rice pilaf to this, I'll put the link in the card section up above because that goes great. If, but if this is pretty low carb minus the potatoes, it is time to take a bite. I just put some green bean salad, the chicken and potatoes with the sauce on top and some tzatziki in my plate. Let me have the salad first. Mmm, so delicious. The acidity from the balsamic vinegar goes so well with the sweetness of the honey and the figs. That creamy feta in there is just perfect. Time to take a bite of the potato and chicken, the lemony potatoes and chicken. And the potatoes are really nice and tender. Get some tzatziki in there too with the chicken. Mmm. Comforting, delicious, flavorful, a well-balanced meal ready in under an hour. If you want to serve a delicious dessert with this, make my chocolate hazelnut pie. You could probably squeeze it in because it just takes a few minutes to put together and then it takes about an hour to bake in the oven. But if you're going to make some, make some for the week so that way you could have some delicious dessert to snack on. If you want me to add desserts to the 60 minute, 60 minute dinner menus, let me know and I'll put something together for you guys. Let me know what you guys think. Get the recipes on DemetriusDishes.com. All the measurements are going to be in the description box down below as well as the links. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. I'll see you all next time. Yes, us.